Direct from the Ed Bernstein Show archives, Ed interviews the confetti-throwing zany funny man, Rip Taylor. Hang on, we're going back to 1997. I swear I saw Elvis eating a ding-dong Outside the pig bleak weekly last night Out there beneath a street light He gave me such a fright In his blue suede shoes, Mr. G.I. I swear I saw Elvis eating a ding dong outside the pig last night. Saw Elvis eating my ding dong. Um, eating a ding, a ding dong. dong. Who, who, um, this is a, 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 an audience quiz. Who is the singer of that tune? Is it a famous country singer? Is it a famous folk singer? Or is it my guest today, Rip Taylor? Hey, kids! <laughs> It's Rippy. We finally pitched up together, Ed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we've been running into each other for, uh, All for these 15 nasty years yes, or so. Yes, we have. And, and uh, I said, I'll be over there, and I never did, and here we are now. Well, you're, you're busy. I mean, you're here, you're Thank you, you're Jesus. Here, you're yes, there. I am. I had hair when I first met you, and now I'm wearing everybody's <laughs> hair. Ed, let me tell you something. That song is from a movie I just did. It's a documentary about people who swear they've seen Elvis since he died. Uh -huh. And it's coming out this week all over the country. And it's called, I Swear I Saw Elvis Eating a Ding Dong, which is a chocolate ca uh, cake, uh -huh. at the Piggly Wiggly, which is stores in the South, last night. <laughs> I'm, I'm not and proud. I will do it all. So, Who cares? I did Sermonette yesterday. I don't care. Well, you, you, I mean, you, you've done so much. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I well, hate I'm to get serious. Yeah, don't push it. Yeah, but, now, wait a minute. But you've done theater. Yeah. Right? Uh, you've done movies. Yeah. Recorded tunes. You've done comedy. Yeah. You do your your your, your Vegas type of shows. You got to keep moving uh, you've with done my act. That's game how shows, got it. Television. Yes. Uh, what haven't you done that you wanted to do? Well, I may do your next game show. We never know, right. Ed. We <laughs> never know. I was in Hawaii last week. I was there for eight weeks trying to heal. Heal, well, heal what from happened. what? Yeah. Uh, I fell down on television on the Rosie O'Donnell show February the 11th and broke two bones in my back. You have a good attorney. Which I didn't want to. <laughs> 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 Yes, I do, but Rosie said, why don't you sue me? I got plenty of money. <laughs> and it was at Universal when they did it in Hollywood, yeah. and I don't sue, but, but it, that's why I'm in town also to see you and do the show and see my mother, who lives here, and Debbie Reynolds, where we invest in the hotel, and to do this show and to look at my doctor, look at my back. It's much better. Mm -hmm. You go to, you go to a chiropractor? Here. No, I, I go to osteopath here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Maroon, where everybody knows. Uh -huh. He's very good. But that's how I, what happened. I, go, I went to Hawaii to heal to swim, hoping it would help the back, but the back problem, you know, is very tricky. Yeah, yeah. didn't work. But I'm a lot better. Heal the, nobody... the rest of you, but not your back. Yeah, exactly, everything is fine. I got all yeah. these shirts. My career should be as busy as this shirt. What do, you, what, do you do when, what do you do when you go to Hawaii? Do you, I mean, do you, do you swim in the ocean? Do I you, swim do, in the exercise? ocean, and I look at the volcano, Diamond Head, and I go see shows at night. I know many friends. I, I'm going to retire there. If I ever use that word again, mm -hmm. I'll kill myself. But I'm going to end up there. I like it so much. Mm -hmm. I go there to heal. It's very calming. But when you say retire, it, uh, you're uh, Stop 60 working on it. So are you. Seven. Goodbye. And thanks for watching, Tony. <laughs> nice to see you. And don't forget to write in case you get work. How many, I mean, how many more years do you think you're going to be in this I understand FedEx place? is teaming up with UPS going to call it Fed Up. <laughs> Did you know this? Yes, thank you so much. I'm going to keep going till they catch going. on, for mm -hmm. God's sake. I'm doing a play. Now, here's what happened. I did a movie recently, that Elvis thing. Right. Before that, I did uh, Wayne's World 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me go back now. Before that, well, I did... Let's talk about your movies for Wait a minute. minute. I did this scene. Put this scene on the camera for me. I want to show oh, you this what, what scene is without it? my what, hairpiece. What, what movie is this? I want you to see that this is Indecent Proposal. Oh, this is a real Lee movie. Myself. Okay. A real movie with my hair off. Hit it. Diana. Diana. The procession has ended. There's a fellow out there who wants to see $10 million homes. There is a God. Find someone else. Find someone else? Are you nuts? Do you know what the commission is on $10 million? I can't do it. You have to do it. You're the best one I have. You're the only one I have. The others are all on caravan. Sorry, Mr. Langford, I can't. Diana, I would never dream of forcing you to do anything against your will. <laughs> Except this one time. Now move your ass or you're fired.
And that scene with Demi, I met her the first day of the shooting, uh -huh. and, and I, well, Demi, D-E-M-I, is like Demi Tess, I thought, you know. So I said, oh, I'm going to meet Demi, Demi, Demi Moore. He said, watch it, watch it. That's all he said was watch it, watch. Adrian Lyon, the director. And I, wa I walked into her trailer. I said, Demi. She said, it's Demi. <laughs> I said, it's the rip. <laughs> and only then did we hit it off, because she could have been real tough. But she's a real pro. They sent limousine for her. She was living at the beach. Right. She ran alongside of the limousine rather than get in it so she'd stay in shape. Uh, she, uh, That's she, a she, determined actress. Is she a very beautiful woman? Oh, stunning. Spectacular, huh? <laughs> but you look, you look great. It's with, different. With, it's a different you, look. You have more hair than I have. Not necessarily. I was going to take my wig off today and put it on you, but I might be rude. I don't have no. any glue to put it back on. Mm -hmm. I may do it to end the show today. But, we'll see. Act surprise. Why, why, why do you wear it? I mean, you look, you look terrific. Uh, Ed, look in the camera. Look at me. Look at this. I right. get more laughs with the wig than I do without the wig. Mm -hmm. I mean, off. It's because I want to be a character. Look at my eyebrow. Up. Everything's up. It's a character. Uh -huh. Now, when I don't want to be recognized, I don't wear the hair. I don't wear gla I don't talk. And I go sit quiet, and that's my other right. side, which I'm not boring. This is like a reverse disguise. That's what got me the part in the movie. And I did another one recently where I played a mafia, where they blackened this, 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 and this, and no hair, and I got, and no one knew it was me, which is good. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not apologizing for being gifted and funny, but I want to do both, and that's what's happening. Yeah, I mean, you're so recognizable. That's uh, why, visually, because I wear the crap, the, the stuff. The, the crap. How do you do? The way you dress, the way you look. But also, your voice is very unique, and you and, yeah. you're, and you've been uh, uh, you've been the voice. Of I'm a Uncle lot. Fester in the Adams Family cartoon series every week on ABC. Listen up, folks, to what I have to say about living your life the best way. Now, is that something that you do on a regular basis, or you do, do, it, you do it for all money? One, one, I mean, you do it just like take a week out of your life and do them all. You do you, it all yeah. at one time. Mm -hmm. and in it is John Aston is Gomez, and, uh, and Carol Channing is in it as, as uh, Granny. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's a lot and, and of you fun. Were in, and you were in DuckTales? DuckTales, I was the genie, yeah. You were the genie in DuckTales, and there's yeah, you another have to one. Do, you do a lot of everything. And uh, also, let me just keep... Tom and Jerry. Up. Tom and Jerry. Yes, I was in Tom and Jerry where they spoke. Um, now, I Captain doing, somebody. Yes, Captain Kitty. Captain Kitty. Now, I've just signed to do the national tour of, and I keep plugging me, forgive me, everybody. I'm doing the uh, this thing, the... Funny thing happened on the way to the forum. You don't have to get, but anyway, yeah. I'm doing okay. on the way to the forum in January for mm -hmm. uh, 50 weeks. So right. that'll be in, in a town near you, besides Las Vegas. So that's good. Then I wrote a one-man play because you got to keep moving. Uh huh. I wrote a one-man play, and it's called Letter, Letter Rip. Letter Rip, which is about what? And it's a story about a funny man. It happens to be me. It's is this autobiographical? And, well, it's kind of like an ego trip, but we'll see. Story I did funny it in man. Phoenix. It worked. He made America laugh for the last 30 and has worked with the best from. Gleason to Carson. Yeah. And fascinating. And tell me about working with Gleason. Oh, was that interesting? Oh, Ed, I swear to you on a Bible, he fired me on the air. <laughs> on the air. Now, what, was this on his television on show? On his television show. Fired uh. me. I've got to be like a six, it was a 10 week thing after the six week. He'd say, These 23 elephants, and that was my cue to come out. Right. He never rehearsed. And one time I leaned on his shoulder crying because I was the crying comedian at that time on the Ed Sullivan. Right. <laughs> and I leaned on his shoulder. We got a big laugh. He, and when he finished the last sketch, he'd say, get out of here. And I would get out of there. And I, in the wings, the people were still laughing. I said, Mr. Gleason, that was the best. He says, it certainly was good, but you're fired. <laughs> and I said, excuse me. He says, oh, yeah, you're fired. I said, why? He says, you touched me. I says, I didn't touch you. He says, you leaned on my shoulder and did not ask permission. You touched me. And I was fired. Wow. Go tell people that on the street, that you got fired because you didn't ask permission to lean on the man's so, shoulder, so who Jackie, never wanted to rehearse anyway. Yeah, he had, so he had an attitude, huh? Uh, attitude? <laughs> Look in the mirror. Attitude? Please, you scare people yourself, Eddie. No one knows. Look at that face. Look at his face. He can <laughs> laugh and smile, and he's so serious. Because he's a businessman and a lawyer, everything's serious. But look, he's uh, human. Gleason, I don't know. He was really a different type of person, uh -huh. though. I, it wasn't anything but, I guess, his attitude. He was always drunk, he said. I met him 20 years later on the, Ed Sol on the Mike Douglas show, and he said, I don't even know who you were, kid. I was drunk for 20 years. Oh, wow. And I felt devastated because yeah. he was my idol. And again, idols, I recently went to the funeral of Red Skelton. Mm -hmm. Bob Hope was there, Milton Berg, and the eulogy. It was very touching. He was my idol, too. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Carson, uh, people say that Johnny Carson is very cold. Well, he was cold yeah. to me. I, I told I'd go by just that. How are you, kid? And then walked away. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. I said, fine, thank you if he gives you. You know, you don't get it. 
Interesting how they change. And we're still at it, though. That, that's all. There's room for all of us. Someone's doing my act now, stealing all these props and things. And I went to them. I said, let me help you make it better if you're going to steal it. Right. Then they said, I'm not stealing. And I said, not only are you stealing it, now you're lying about stealing it. So it's just, there's room for all of us, Eddie. God in heaven, it's such a short time. Who's your favorite comedian? It was Red Skelton. Now I don't think I have too many. A lot of, them, a lot of the new ones are too dirty for me. And I mean, I've been risque, of course. But because uh, I work strip clubs in my life for starting out, you had to be that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be still around to talk about it today. But I don't have that many new ones, I guess. I love the brilliant thinking of Dennis Miller. I like the mind. But he's so caustic when he talks about it. Because he's serious. He's not kidding. He's really full of that venom and hate. But he makes me laugh when he says mm -hmm. things. Brilliant. What do you think about all the, the, the sitcoms that are so big on TV, You know, the Seinfeld kind of spinoffs? Uh, well, I don't know. I can't seem to get in one because every time I read, which I read a lot, they say, but you're going to outshine the star. And I say to them, then get a better star right. that has no insecurities, which they, we all do. But uh, please, what, am I going to scare them? Or I, you, I guess I, you walk in and I intimidate them. You've been in, in television series yes, before. Yes, I you? have. Which ones were you in? I did in uh, Down to Earth where I played an angel. Right, which I thought was a It was an interesting job. part because yeah. they wrote it funny and I was, I'd mm -hmm. pop in and pop out. It was a funny character. Right. What and happened? That I was, what, would that run for a season? What happened oh, no, to the it show? ran for four years. Four years. Then yeah. I do mostly game shows because that way I'm very gifted at quick spontaneity. Yeah, I, I mean, living. God mm -hmm. gave me the gift. So what's wrong with that? But the others, they say, oh, no, he can't do it. Demi Moore said, yes, he can. That's how I got that. But now I'm doing more serious things. But on the way to the forum, it's good. Mm -hmm. And then I work with Debbie Reynolds at the hotel whenever I'm in town. You know, we, we, we uh, do the act together. And then Rosie and all the talk shows. And I just recently, oh, please, on a gambling ship in Tunica, Mississippi. Entertaining on the gambling ship. Oh, oh, isn't it interesting what has happened to our careers? <laughs> a gambling ship. Ed, here's the land, and an inch in the water of Mississippi is yeah. the barge. And because it's on the water, it's legal. It's legal. Nothing but technicalities. Nothing huh? but money. Money. They must have mm -hmm. a good lawyer. Did you handle that deal, too? Yeah, <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> did, much. Did they, but they're getting top name entertainment. Top dollar. Who was the most impressive person you've ever met in your career? The most impressive was Debbie Reynolds, and that's the truth. Uh, because she's the definition of a friend. She's there hot and cold, mm -hmm. muck and mire, rain, snow. She's always there. Not only is she a talented, but they forget she's a good actress. But she's a true friend. She let me, uh, let me work with her in the beginning, you know, and I work with a lot of other stars, too, who are just as wonderful, and Margaret and Sammy Davis. But uh, Debbie and I still join at the hip. Mm -hmm. That's why at the hotel it was our annuity. It sort of crumbled a little bit, but we have to get it back together. It's coming mm -hmm. together. Is the hotel open now? Or yes, it, uh, yes. And tonight, but the as casino's we speak, night. Is that how that works? Tonight, as we speak, they're getting slot machines back again. Oh, good. So it's her movie career resurgence has really helped her anyway, mm -hmm. too. You know, Mother and then In and Out. Which, uh, uh, have you seen In and Out? It's very funny. No, but I've heard it's very good. It's very yeah. funny. And she, she, I think she plays her own mother, which makes me laugh because the woman she's playing looks just like her mother. Mm hmm. Well, it's good. It's funny. It's wonderful. It, it seems that that a lot of people of your peer group that were very big 20, 30 years ago and kind of went through a period of, uh, of less popularity. And then it's, it's like, it seems Comedy it's, it's, has it's, it's come back. Too. A lot of these, you, you well, because they tried all the uh, Playboy clubs, which had no place else to work but Playboy. Then uh -huh. we all worked the cruise ships, which is the only work to do. Then all the comedy clubs are not closing because of the comics who they thought were going to be bigger, 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 got dirtier and dirtier and dirtier, and there's only a choice few of that dirty who cleaned up to make it. That was that cycle. Now the comedy clubs are not as popular, and the people are not going. So that cycle is going, but we still linger on. Now, now I'm becoming the dean of American humor. I am not. I'm still working. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We're still performing. Is it, is it become more difficult to find new material as... No, 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 not at all. Just tell the truth and exaggerate a little bit. That's all. <laughs> no, that's, please. Ask any lawyer. You're not, please. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's easy. And, and, and if you're gifted, and it's best if they know your face when you walk in the door, and then they go, hi. They start smiling. Then it's difficult when you want mm -hmm. to be serious in a dramatic scene, and then this young director says uh, to Shelley Winters, what have you done? To Shelley Winters. Right. He said, what have you done? <laughs> and she said, some people think I can act. 
which is great for her to say that, but why should she be asked that question? Isn't comedy one of the hardest things to act? It is, I think so, especially for people who I'm working for to buy the fact that we have the discipline to do the drama. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. I have almost created a monster because now I want to make that transition, and it's hard because they say, where's your graffiti? Which is confetti, but those people are so stupid they call it graffiti. <laughs> but <laughs> I do lose go to pilots every day. I go to pilots all the time. How'd that confetti thing come about? Uh, I was doing Merv Griffin's show by accident. I went right into the dumper. I didn't memorize well, so I won't tear this. I had them written on cards, and they weren't laughing. I tore the cards, threw it in the air, knocked over his desk, pulled <laughs> off Charo's wig, pulled off Van Johnson's shoes, and ran down the street to Sardi's and got drunk. Two weeks later, when they showed the show, the switchboard lit up, says, who's that crazy man? And it was me, and I went back, and that's how it all started, throwing things at the audience. <laughs> then I threw food, I threw popcorn and marshmallows. And this is before Gallagher. Every Oh, please, <laughs> I can name others who have stolen. Yeah, thank you. Gallagher was a busboy at the Maxim. Ask him uh -huh. when I met him. Hi, Mr. Taylor, it's so nice meeting you. He was so humble. Yes, oh, yes, yes. And that doesn't make me the dean of a human. It means I'm still around working, mm -hmm. pal. You know what I'm saying. Right. Do you see more serious roles for you? No, no, no. I no, don't want to do war and peace. That, I yeah. want to be like the Jack Lemmon, you know, next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And in a series even, now I'm going to be the uncle. Don't you dare mention father. Oh, grandfather, because I'm old. I ain't old. But I want to be in like Fraser's father, you know, that type of mm -hmm. role. You get in, you get the laughs, get the money, and get out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. No, I don't want to be the star of the show, but I'm sure going to be noticed. I don't dance. This is it. You know what I'm saying. So it's one thing you don't do is dance. Not now, not much. I used to dance. I did Sugar Babies on Broadway with Ann Miller, and that was fun. She's a funny woman. She doesn't know how funny she is. One day I said, Ann, we can't work tomorrow because it's Passover. She says, I don't do game shows. <laughs> I fell on the floor. She didn't know how funny she was. She's hysterical. Yeah. And I got all the plugs in. Oh, thank you. Wayne's World, the actor to me more. Elvis on the way to the forum, Entertainer of the Year, three years in a row in Las Vegas. Entertainer of the Year, three years in a row. At the Stardust Hotel years ago. Mm -hmm. That was such fun. Oh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about doing Wayne's World. Oh, that was, was interesting, was... too. I walked into the uh, reading. They, I, I didn't have to read for this. They knew me in the two comics. Oh, man. Hello, is anybody here? Hello? <laughs> Oh my God, Rip Taylor! <laughs> oh my God! How are you? You must be Wayne Campbell. Yes, I am. Oh, yes. How are you, Wayne? Very good. <laughs> this must be Wayne stock. Yes, oh, it is. Yes, it it's is. It's a little rustic, a little bucolic, but oh, oh well, I like it. It's cute. Thanks. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, how are you, Pat? Better get ready for the show. Get dressed. <laughs> you can see him. Well, of course I can see him. I mean, how are you going to miss a half-naked Indian, for God's sake? <laughs> you know, Mike and right. Dana, Dana Carvey, and they'd sit at my feet like a movie and say. What was it like then? I says, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean, what was it like? Sammy Davis, what was he like? <laughs> oh, shut up. And they were serious, because they had, uh, what am I, the, here I am, the dean again, yeah. knowing all. The uncle. <laughs> that was terrible, yes, I got the part. <laughs> but that was funny. That was no script at all. You improvise, and they let you do it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And they pay well. Hey, you, did, you did something that I uh, found on my uh, internet the other day. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> see, I got, things, uh -huh. I got surprises here for you, right? Oh, good. Uh, I Am America. Yeah. Which was a, a, a kid's audio. Yes, it Read was by dubbed. presidents. Yes. I mean, it, Ron, and didn't you follow Ronald Reagan? Yes, I did. What was that about? Well, Dub Books did it for America. We didn't get paid. We did it for charity, mm -hmm. which we all do a lot of things for charity, if it helps. But it was about how you love the country. That was fun to do because no one thought you had the discipline to and, do so it. So what did you say? No, I thought it was a whole long 27-page oh, okay. script. In other words, you don't but remember. Was, no, I don't. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up. I'm going to smack him with my hair in a minute. No, no, but it was very serious. Yeah. And they, I like when they don't think you can do it. Uh -huh. Then they're so shocked when you do it. And they say, what happened to you? Or when you go into a place and you're not on. Right. Aren't you feeling well? I feel fine. You know, they want you to be on. I'm not on. I may appear to be on, mm -hmm. but I ain't on. Mm -hmm. How often does that happen, other than this morning? It doesn't happen too frequently now, because I, I, uh, I don't go out that much with the uh, stuff on, the, shirt, the loud shirt and the wing uh -huh. and all that stuff. So it's easier to get into that character? Yeah, when, when you walk in to read serious, you look serious when you walk in. I did a Diet Coke thing yesterday in L.A. What is it? What I was is that? to be a, it was in Hollywood. I, it's it, a commercial? Yes. A commercial? And it was about an English bartender, an older man, thank you for asking, who was giving a Diet Coke to the Invisible Man. 
he came in and says, and he said, now, Mr. Taylor, the camera's on you. Now watch, he's tall, and he says, give me a Diet Coke. And I go, oh, well, yeah, of course. And that's all I had to say. <laughs> but the camera was on me and the thing and the diamond, and that was what it was. But it's the weirdest business we're in, isn't it? How much is that worth? That'll be an awful lot of money because they give you the uh, the original for doing. Right. Then they give you the twelve week thing. If you want to do a buyout for thousands, you can. Uh, if you want to gamble, you can say, okay, every twelve twelve week cycle, you get more money. Uh -huh. I'd rather gamble and take the twelve week cycle. So you're you're going to go with them. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, I'd say thank you. I'd take it now, and I did, and I was sorry. Because mm -hmm. then you because I did a Dr Pepper years ago. How, how many offers do you get like that? Well, you get them a lot now because the people, the younger ones, don't. Uh, I keep saying age. I don't mean to do that. The younger ones don't have the experience. I mean, what's his name? Uh, from George from Seinfeld does a lot of that. Oh yeah, he's Alexander. Yeah. He's yeah, Jason everywhere. Alexander. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's everywhere. He's a talented boy. Very lucky. So, there, is there as, as much money as commer in commercials as as people think? Like yes, a voice. Brenda Vaccaro does an awful lot in voiceovers too. So does Sally Kellerman now. How much is a voiceover worth? Oh, 300, 400,000 could lead to. Wow. Yeah, when they rerun it over and uh -huh. over. And imagine the man who did Darth Vader, what's his name, James Earl Jones. Ooh, mm -hmm. this is CNN. Every time he gets 500, thank you. They do it every three minutes. Hello, this is CNN. Wow. Thank you, James Earl. Cash, ding, ding, the cash register goes. Yeah. <laughs> and, you don't, like, and you don't have to worry about what you're wearing, right? <laughs> exactly, or you put the hair on either. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how it looks. But Marina was so sweet to get me on your show today, and thank yeah. you for and, and I understand she had, a, she had, in order for, her, for you to come on the show today, she had to make a deal that she would deliver you at a, at a, at a certain restaurant. I uh, told after her to be show. quiet about that. Yeah, That's we won't mention the business. name, but, but, but uh, you have your, your, your standard places that you frequent. Yes, nobody's business. Do you get recognized when you, everywhere you go? Yes, I don't dance. To, uh, this is it for me, so I do, and I don't mind. I usually have a rubber stamp, and I stamp their hand. <laughs> And I see you can get back into the gymnasium now, <laughs> like the dance, you know, they laugh at that. Uh -huh. Or I have pictures, and, you know, sometimes when they, when they say, you're Captain Kangaroo, I say, well, kiss my pouch, because I don't like that at mm. all. And then they say, you're the Wizard of Oz, which they said in Mississippi. Mm. You're the Wizard of Oz. No, I'm not. He died when he was 80. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm going to smack him. But, you know, but they do remember, and they do know the voice, too, mm. which is interesting. Another movie. Oh, then I, I met uh, someone at Vons recently. Right. Walked up to me and said, you don't look funny to me. <laughs> That's an opening line, Ed. And I said to them, well, you look funny to me. And they got mad. <laughs> they got mad. And that nun never spoke to me again. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. It was yeah. fun. Said it to me. What are you doing here? Shopping. <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy. You mean you eat? <laughs> yes. Take a you picture. Cook? He's smiling. You got to see this close-up, folks. These are rare. This is for the party up. Take real. <laughs> Marina was so sweet to pick me up. The Hawaiian angel. Yes, we yeah. had an she, affair. Yeah, we she, had a catered one. Yeah. Don Ho sang. Well, you you had a lot to talk about about Hawaii, right? Oh, I love Marina's from Hawaii. Loved it. Love it. Love it there. Mm -hmm. Love it. What, what, what island do you like in Just Hawaii? Just Waikiki in the middle of everything. Like right. I live in Las Vegas, if you're with the IRS, I live here legally. Yes, legally. Uh, no, no, I really no do. income tax. I know you I really I know do you legally here. for 35 yeah. years. And, uh, I but, ran into you with Vons. But I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I enjoy here. I always have. I can go back to Bonanza Airlines, to, you know, the two mm -hmm. propellers. Before, yeah. Yeah, $12 the old, one the way to L.A. Hughes Terminal. Oh, it's really yeah. interesting. What do you think about the way Las Vegas is, is I don't growing? care for it. I want the old little town back. I want the yeah. little town. I don't. I can move to New York if I want to see all this. Mm -hmm. Yet it is the entertainment capital of the world, and I laugh whenever they say Atlantic City was going to be threatening. Leave me alone. I worked there for Burr for two years in a show he wrote it, uh, called Rip Roaring. I said, what a clever name for me, Rip. Thank you, Burr. <laughs> I took the money, though. So some comedians complain that that there's as, as Las Vegas gets bigger, there's really less opportunities for for comedians. I mean, oh yeah, they don't well, have the lounge probably shows. the ones you're talking yeah. to are the lounge comics right. who didn't quite graduate or uh, well, can't get into a review. Right, because now they have you know the Six Feet and Roy, the Cirque, all, all, yeah. all those type of thing. And uh, wonderful shows too. Great shows, yeah. but they don't leave opportunities for entertainers. No more. No, that's why the comedy clubs existed, and now they're not doing well because. The people who are there now are 40, and mm -hmm. they don't go anymore. You know what I mean? Right. Because everybody, everybody's a comedian. 
They have two jobs, lawyer or comedian. And what about the audiences in uh, Did he hear what I just said? Yes, lawyer Thank or you, comedian. Brother. Thank <laughs> you. Brother. I want that laugh again. Get that close up. You'll never see this again. This is a Christmas card. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> what was I going? Oh. Amazon Women on the, in the Moon. I was in that too. Amazon Women on the Moon, John Landis, who produced it, hates, hates, hates agents. There were 47 so called stars in the movie. He paid every one of us scale, $500 for day. the day. Mm -hmm. And per diem, which is non commissionable, $5,000 a day. Now that's, that's hating an agent. Well, maybe that's why the movie didn't do very well. So we well. didn't have to pay anybody. We just paid him five fifty. dollars Hello, thank you. Right. On the five hundred. dollars Milton Berle could not make it, and Rip Taylor could. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Rip Taylor. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Charlie said, Harvey, keep it down. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, there goes that act. <laughs> the president couldn't be here, Harvey, so he sent a wire. <laughs> Tell him it's a, never mind. Oh, that's a, that was an interesting, it's good, it's true. That was a funny movie. Uh -huh. that was in, but, oh, God, what a funny, weird movie. Now, what happens when these things go into uh, to video? You still make residuals? No, I did the buyout, like I okay. talked to you earlier. That one was I, a buyout. I could have uh, gambled and said, well, I'll get a penny each copy. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. How a... about the decent proposal? Was that uh, a buyout? It was only was a two day for me. I mm -hmm. wanted to stay forever and work in that film because it was so nice to be around those professional people. Right. And to me, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We... And Robert Redford was just charming. Rip, how are you? It's nice to see you. Ba -ba -ba, my God. I said, take a picture of this. It ain't going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> they were nice people. How did you get that part? Uh, they saw me working in uh, in Las Vegas at the, the at the, where was I? Oh, in the Rockettes at the Flamingo. I replaced Susan Anton. And they said, you can do this. I yeah. said, I know. And they came and saw me perform. And well, wonderful. if you can replace Susan Anton, you can certainly do that That's role. That's epic. <laughs> yeah, mine are a little bigger. But I'm talking about the fact that I replaced her and then she's back in the show temporarily now. Okay. Yeah. We have about a minute left. Uh, oh, okay. So... Anything you want to say before yeah, we just, leave? Yeah, uh, it's so I mean, nice that uh, that you got this interesting job. I wish you'd get yeah. more diversified people. Don't get too serious all the time. That's my advice to you. And then you can go back to network, you see, right. spread out. <laughs> Let's put Rip's uh, music back on as we, oh, uh, hey, as folks, we close out here. Oh, hey, folks, thanks for letting me come into your home you. with Head today. And then thanks for watching his show. It's very interesting. It's like a journal. Instead of reading the paper, he'll tell you all the news, what we don't usually read in the paper, about the college. About the college. Very interesting. Yeah. And about Rippy and other people in town that are quite diversified and entertainers and people. Thank Rick Welch, who's in the booth, saying, who was that? <laughs> thank Marina. Thank you, Hawaii. Thank you, Ed. Thank your lovely wife, Charming. And I want to get Phil to thank Phil and Corinna. I'm going to thank them all. They're just okay. so lovely people. How? How? Well, you know how. His yeah. breath will kill you. <laughs> but anyway, Jim and Travis and Julie, they're all here today. <laughs> Eugene and Tom, DC, we call them Tom. I open tonight in Las Vegas. I'm a little hoarse right now. <laughs> a little hoarse. Do you get it? <laughs> I tried sniffing glue, kept getting the tube stuck in my nose. I tried smoking hash, but I couldn't light the corn beans. <laughs> Here's why I'll read another one for you. I just made a killing in the market. I shot my butcher. I got a new vacuum cleaner. It really sucks.